And uh, why not talk about the defending champions, Manchester City? They... Um, yet again, had to come back in a game, this time of a Crystal Palace in which they were 2-0 down in, ended up winning 4-2 at the Etihad and it's all about Erling Haaland, that 19 mm. minute second half hat trick. Yes and I mean I, look, lots of people have, because you can watch football every day of the week and all over the world Nat, you can see European football watching Dortmund over a number of years in the Champions League and always would wonder where would he find his the league where he become, he can become a better player? So when Man City and obviously he's a Man City supporter, his dad played for the club. When Man City took him, I was like, right, okay, Erlen Ireland has got nearly everything you could want from a striker. He has an incredible desire. He's incre- he's really quick. Not bad in the air. Probably he's part of his weakest game. I know he scored ahead of yesterday, but he's not really a, a six foot five striker who gets above people and heads them in the back of the net. He doesn't do that too often. But he's got great quick feet and he's got a literally a launch pad, a launch pad of a left foot. He, <laughs> when he lets it go of his left foot now, it flies. So how does he fit into the city system? Well, if you'd watched the, the game yesterday and you watched the first half, you come away thinking, like we have already, we've seen, do they use him enough? Can they find ways of getting him into the game more? Because quite clearly in the start of the season, even though he's a top goal scorer in the Premier League at the moment, it looks like City can do more with him. So how good is he going to become at City? Because I think, yes, it was a perfect example. They're 2-0 down, they find a way and they create chances and he's there to punish the teams, which is, you know, watching him do it is pretty dynamic. As I said, they were 2-0 down to Crystal Palace, who, as we remember, last season... Were two nil beat uh, Manchester City at the Etihad by two goals to nil as well. Um, should it have been three nil? Now we were just watching this disallowed goal for Palace, in which Jordan Ayew capitalised on a a moment, shall we say, where Edison attempts to throw out uh, the ball, and it was disallowed because there was the suggestion that he hadn't released the ball fully. But Odson Edward had sort of got a touch on the ball which ended up then falling into the path of Ayu who did put the ball in the back of the net but the goal was disallowed did you see anything wrong with that? Not really no I think it's very harsh on Crystal Palace not to go 3-0 up Mm. I mean it tells you the fine lines of sport and especially we're watching football and there's a lot of controversy in sport isn't there in, in, in our game we watch it and you come away thinking well okay it doesn't really matter you think that at the time but they're 2-0 up and it's hard to actually Make you know get, to make an outcome on it because I I'm looking at it and I think well I can't see anything wrong with that I didn't see any anything wrong with Harvey Barnes's goal at Chelsea mm. you know but a referee has said no there's an infringement of some sort did you see it in that could you find it I find it very difficult it, it, no absolutely from the angles that I was it's not conclusive I, I don't know I, I thought it was slightly unlucky certainly for, for Crystal Palace because it did look as though it was Edison's mistake it looks like he's released the ball but the referee had thought differently and just to reiterate the rule is that a player if you prevent the goalkeeper from releasing the ball from their hands or their kick or attempt to kick the ball when the goalkeeper is in the process of releasing it it is an infringement therefore that's why the goal was disallowed um, with regards to Manchester City's performance Tuna, I mean, once again, they've had to come back in a game. They did that against Newcastle. Um, is that an issue, really, that Pep Guardiola will be concerned about, that they're having to fight back? Or will it not matter because ultimately they're, you know, they've got, got a point against Newcastle? They've beaten Palace. Well, last year they were fantastic defensively, so it does matter. Last week they conceded three at Newcastle. Yeah. And we can, you know, as we should do, give a lot of credit to the way Newcastle played the game last week and Eddie Howe's tactics to try and hurt City. And likewise yesterday, um, it was very dominant to City in the first half and then 2-0 down. But Palace had a, a counter-attack style. They had no Wilf Sahar in their team, which is a big blow for them. He's instrumental for Crystal Palace. Mm. Um, and they conceded two. So they're not as good. And you can clearly see that they're not as good defensively so far. It's early days, but so far they haven't shown the... The, the side that was so difficult to score against last year. So there, there would be then? an issue. What is it then about, you know, you say that about Man City, Liverpool, they've looked shaky. Yeah. I know yesterday's a different story, but they've looked a little shaky defensively. A lot of teams don't 
yet feel as they as though they found no. defensive solidity. Well, you talk you know talk about City in them two games now. They conceded three in the Community Shield mm. against yeah. Liverpool. Mm. You know they they've looked shaky. They I mean this doesn't matter because there was a huge amount of changes. But in midweek they played a a match against Barcelona and there was some players who played. I think Diaz played. I think De Bruyne played. Diaz played at uh, the heart of the back line. I think and. Um, they conceded three there. Now, it just doesn't feel... City are used to ke- get keeping clean sheets, which is, you know, they had a fantastic defensive record and they've had that for the last few years. They've been solid as a rock as a side. And this year, they look way more vulnerable. Um, where, you know, seeing them get three, conceding three against Liverpool, three against Newcastle, two against Palace, and could have easily been three yesterday against Palace. Mm. So... Um, it's a, it's a strange one because you look at the the situation. Both Man City and Liverpool play four games. Both are considered five. Yeah, which is way it's above. It's not what you'd expect. No, 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 it's way above. It's Brighton, by the way, who have the best defence. They have considered just the one goal so far. Just to reiterate the situation there. But yeah, um, ultimately though, Pep Guardiola will be happy because it's three points. They've come back. They've shown that resilience, ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous resilience, and also that sort of thought of. You ex- just expect more to come from Manchester City as well. Well, they're so good, and watching a Pep Guardiola's team play the game, and you know what you're coming up against. They dominate the ball, they create chances for fun. It's it's a very de- their fullbacks are so instrumental, like Liverpool's back fullbacks have been in recent years. Um, they don't quite look as good in them positions. I mean, I remember when Pep he made the big change when Cliche Cliche went out the door. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one who was at Arsenal, oh, the other fullback, the other side, his name. That anyway, name has me but, as but, well. but there's they, he changed both fullbacks, you know. And is he getting to the stage where he's going to change next summer? Both mm. fullbacks again. Mm. I was surprised he let Shinchenko go. I was really surprised in that. Now I know he wanted to play more, but I think he's a much more solid, um, reliable fullback than Cancelo. Cancelo is a great footballer, great attacking player, but I think City at their very best, it, it, he didn't fit for me in that that left back position. Mm. You know, you can play on both sides. So, um, but you know, Carl Walker. Um, been terrific for City over the years, but I do think next summer will be interesting what City do in them yeah. fullback areas. And a quick word on Palace, what they can gain out of this game? Well, they'll be they'll be furious with themselves, won't they? Patrick Vieira will be so disappointed that you can go two and up at the Champions, and then um, you up conceding four in the second or four goals, you know, late on in the game. I mean, Ireland, Ireland, you stopped for most of the game, and that nineteen minute burst has yeah. cost them dearly. Well, that's it. It's the second half. It was, a, it was a turnaround in terms of Manchester City just stepping it up, shall we say, maybe, and, yeah. and getting those four goals that crucially won them the game. A very tailor two halves, I suppose, just in terms of goals. But. Well, <clears> on that, Nat, Nat, you picked the goal of the weekend for you was Erlen Ireland's third uh, goal, Bull, which was yeah. the fourth. Now, if you, it's a, one of the reasons that City are going to find, oh, sorry, playing City is going to be really tricky is because if, like, Crystal Palace were 3-2 down and then they try and get bodies forward and then leave two against one he gets in between them and there's space yeah. for him to get into you're in trouble yeah they did find and that and that's out. how you're the goal came about yeah yeah absolutely especially as how quick they played it out from the back um, pretty much City to, to uh, end up with uh, Ilkay Gundogan feeding Haaland for that uh, fourth and final goal The Sunday Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.